<laughs> Hello everyone, welcome to another episode. Uh, in this episode, we finish the pig, the new pig compound. Just about. And we finally finished the cold room. And I've got a really nice gooseberry fall recipe, plus some really good news about my ducks. And we've got lots more coming as well. So it's leaking where they've made this wall structure. Before we get into this week's video, I'd like to show you this. Xsense, that's this week's sponsors, um, and they have a fantastic new water leak detection system, which we're about to review. So here's what comes in the box. Uh, you have your base station and three leak detectors, and obviously a charger for the base station. Uh, the leak detectors have batteries in them, which I should imagine would last for ages. I'm not sure how long they will last, but... So following the instructions in the manual, uh, basically to get notifications on your phone, all you need to do is download their app, which is here, and then you can add device, which is what I'm going to do now, and then you link it to your Wi-Fi and easy. So this is me following the instructions in the little booklet it's really easy just to follow on your phone, simple stuff. So during its first connection you have to follow the instructions. Uh, this turns from uh, red to flashing yellow to like a nice turquoise blue uh, when it's all connected and as you can see on my phone it says device connected. So all done. Finish. So I've followed the instructions and this is the um, leak detection device. So I'm going to put this where we've had a leak in the past and this got all wet and everything got ruined. So for us it's a great thing to put right here where it will detect a leak and, um, and then the alarm will go to the base station. So what I'll do is I'll simulate a leak by putting this underneath a tap. It's very bright here. Very bright. And uh, this is our Simulated leak. Ooh. We have a leak! We have a leak! Wow. So I had to basically I sent a notification um, to my phone. Yeah, uh, very loud alarm, sorry about that. Sent a, a notification to my phone. So as you just saw, the little, the little, and heard, <laughs> the little sensor works great, uh, that, that's awesome. So I'm going to add these other two and put one in each of our three sinks or three bathrooms. I think it's a great little product and it's got sensors on the bottom as well. So even if it's sat on a flat surface and that surface gets wet, it'll pick it up. So if there's anywhere you suspect you may get a leak or whatever, I think they're great. So. There we go, Accents. Uh, there'll be a link in the description. So, just a quick reminder on the Accents uh, water leak detectors. So use our discount code here, Nick PPXS, and that'll give you 15% discount off the Accents website, but it'll give you 25% discount off Amazon UK, and I'll put both the links in the description. So I've just discovered that in the app, uh, you can reduce the volume of the, uh, of, of all the units so that's really good and you can also add up to 50 more devices to the receiver which is just a, just great because if you look on their website which will be attached in the description all discount codes will be in the description uh, if you look on their website they have um, many many products of really good clever stuff for your home okay so now the cold room's all cleaned out uh, ready for grouting and I've cut all these pieces to fit in our little hole here. This is where the air con's gonna be blowing through from the gym. And uh, I'll fit them now. 
and um, great everything and we're done job done oh and we've got to put the plastic trims on everywhere which we bought yesterday Yay. echo in here I know it's good and it should be a good room so hopefully all the bits I've cut fit I'll put a dollop of uh, adhesive on here not the way I normally do it but hey ho um, This is sort of a, not an afterthought, but I didn't put any thought into whether I should tile this or not, which obviously I need to. <coughs> that's the top bit. Pretty sure that's that bit. And then we'll have to put <coughs> see which fits where. Oh yeah, that's funny. Put them right there to the front and we'll back a bit. Maybe back a bit. Don't try this at home. <laughs> okay. So I've got one side up. I'll try. On top, and then put that up. Oh, oh no, it's not going to fit. That's great. I've got room here. What, uh, <clears throat> again, what I like to call an interference fit. <laughs> Let's cut it. There. And then I'll grate these edges. Obviously I've got to fit a piece there. So as you can see, um, I cut this wrong, I, I took the measurement and, and measured from the wrong side of the tile. But we can just cover that up, grate it in, you'll hardly notice it. I won't look there, nobody will see it. It'll be fine, honest. Whew. So I mixed up my grate in a little bowl and it's just a simple case of pushing it in the holes. Like so. I'll make it easy for you. So there we are, uh, grouting done. Um, I'll just show you now the assembly of the table. So while we're waiting for the grout to dry, I'm going to prepare the table. I've got this new, just picked it up, uh, piece of ash, one solid piece of ash for the tabletop, which is great. But what I've got to do. Mm, Let's drill some holes so I can fix it from underneath. Simple stuff.
what I also have to do is cut uh, so the room's just slightly under two meters um, six foot something so I need to cut an angle on the end so um, when it comes against the wall yeah the 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 underside of it needs to be angled so it fits in nicely. That's not really well explained, but that's what I'm going to do. So as you can see, uh, if I get it right here, I've set the saw up to cut on an angle. Um, this is to allow the wood to fit in the gap. So as you can see, yeah, slightly angled. So that's the shelf uh, fitted on the bottom now. I did notch it out a little bit. So what I'll do is I'll take the top off and I'll give Andrew a shout to and we'll put it in the cold room. I'll put some light on. Ta -da! Wow. <laughs> So just fixing the screws in situ. Much easier on the knees. So here goes, cold room, finished. We've got the bench, you just saw me screw the top down on it, the bottom's been fixed, all the grouting's been done. We've got the hole for the aircon, all the knives are up. Uh, yeah, so it's ready for Ange to stock this with all this summer's vegetables that we can keep in the open air like pumpkins etc and underneath will be all the jars and stuff it's nice and cool in here and in here we have the fridge with this fridge extension if we should need it 
Yeah. How's you? And all the trims are on as well. Pleased? Yeah. Good. So it's extremely hot here today. About 35 degrees in the shade. And as you can see, some of these flat peaches are falling on the floor. And um, what happens when they're on the tree, they stay nice and cool. When they fall on the floor, they warm up and it boils them inside. So it's time to pick them all. As you can see, the tiny little tree has done really amazing for these flat peaches. So uh, I think I'm just going to have to get busy with a peach recipe. He's done really well. Oh, as you can see here, these two branches have actually broke with the weight of peaches on them. Still more. Oh, there's a couple here that have dried up. Yeah, chickens. Oh, there. So how many is that? Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, twenty. Wow. That's twenty peaches. Off of that one little tree. So in, a, in an effort to get things finished uh, down here so we can move the pigs in within the next few days. I uh, drill some more posts into granite, which is never a fun job. I'll take some of steel time wire with me, a small hammer, and a few of these. Yeah, so what I'll be what I'll be doing is um, obviously the goats have been here pushing against this, and there is quite a big gap between the posts. So I'll be drilling the granite and putting another post in between these. There'll be several down this row, just making sure it's all tied up. Uh, maybe putting some blocks of granite against it as well where the post is, um, just to take the slack out of it because pigs are very good at pushing with their big noses rather than goats tend to rub up against it like this. This is why this has gone a bit slack. Goats will do this, rub all the way along the fence. Uh, so I need to tighten it all up and sort it out.
So there we go for this bottom side of the uh, lower pig paddock, the boys paddock we, we're going to call it. It's fixed to the rock here and I've put a bit of rebar in between the posts nearly all the way, well, actually all the way. Yeah, so it's nice and secure. There's just a couple of things I'm not happy about down here. Uh, a little bit to do at the top, but just here, uh, like here, I've put a piece of metal on the bottom tied to it. I'm going to put some more rocks just in case. It looks very open, quite easy to push your nose through and break the fence. Like here, I'm going to put a rock here, and maybe one here. I'll just do that a second. I don't know if I can get over the fence here. Yeah. Oh. Gotta be careful with scorpions this time of year, but it should, uh, should be alright. <laughs> and then I'll just roll this one over. Ah. I may not, I've just seen the size of it. Madness is as madness does. Yeah. I don't think I'll push that one out in a hurry. It's more of a visual deterrent for a pig anyway. One day when I hire a mini digger and get all these rocks that are in here and build this wall properly, I think. So while we're down this way, 
the earth has uh, rotated enough to put this in the shade. <coughs> and um, I can hear water leaking here, so I'm going to pull the brambles away and then show you what the problem is. Although I don't know myself yet. Then I need to go in for something cool to drink. <laughs> this is uh, interesting. So after beating our way through there, see where the running water is coming now. So it's leaking where they've made this wall structure. It's leaking on the joint of this massive boulder. There's the level of the pond there. But, look at this, this is amazing. So down in the bottom here, there's a little chamber. In this chamber you'll see here, there's a wooden plug in a pipe. Which must be the drain hole. And then there's another pipe a bit further up. Which must have a tap or something on it. For irrigation, I should imagine. Um, so, what concerns me is this. Where this is coming from. Um, so probably why the level dropped a bit. Although the flow has dropped a bit because it's summer's here and stuff. But absolutely amazing little chamber. They're all made of granite. And there must be a, a pipe, underground pipe going this way. So I should investigate further. Well I've had a bit more digging out and this here. That is actually the bottom. A tiny little bit of gravel in there, but no silt or anything. So, uh, and it looks like a clay pipe that runs away under there and all the way through there somewhere. Well, I know where it comes out. Uh, so, I want to pull the plug, but I don't want to do it now. I'm going to do it. Um, we need to build our pond by the house first. Then we're going to drain this, clean it out, because it has filled up the silt on that end, I know for a fact. Um, reset all the irrigation pipes and the drainage plug here. Maybe put a tap on that. And uh, yeah, reinstate this area and tidy it all up. Give us some beautiful rocks and things. I may even put a bridge over it, you never know. Anyway, it's getting a bit warm now, so I'll go back up and find out what Andrew's doing. I was going to ask what my domestic goddess is up to, but it's pretty obvious. How are you? Hello. You right? Domestic touring. Having fun? Topping and tailing gooseberries. Okay, so this is the ones we picked earlier, yeah? Yeah. So we're very lucky we've got nice red gooseberries and there's a few red currants in there as well, so they're gonna sneak their way in. Cool. So tell us, tell us, tell us. Okay, we've got a little more than um, double the amount that we were going to use. So I'm gonna put 500 grams of the gooseberries, which I've topped and tailed. And there's a few, like I said, there's a few red crud. Currants, currants, red currants in there as well, so they can just because there wasn't enough for you to do much with, but they can just go in here and oh, a little bit of it, I'm gonna hurt. 500. 
yeah. grams. Give or take 48. <laughs> right, we're just going to cook this down with the bits of sugar. So I'm just adding a little bit of water. And let's turn this on a minute. There we go. So it says for caster sugar, but I use the yellow sugar. It's readily available here. Um, so I'm just going to put in, now as we've doubled the recipe, the original recipe calls for three. So I might only put in one. That's five sugar six, five tablespoons of sugar. Yes. Okay, and then how do you put this? In a saucepan. What do we do? We're getting that them heated through and then they need to be able to be a little bit mushy, so apparently they pop. They sort of, well, they might not because I've topped and tailed them, right. but uh, they will get a bit and then you mash them with a potato masher to make a pop. Or not, not a pop pop, but a rough pop. Just yeah, yeah just a squish it down a bit. Cool. So I'm just squashing these all down a bit to make because they've gone quite nice and pulpy and smell nice and gooseberry-ish. So I'm going to put these into this bowl here and I'm going to put that in the fridge to cool down. in the fridge even though it's very hot a few moments later so what do we do now okay so this has been chilling in the fridge so it's nice and cold oh not relaxed what do you mean not relaxed chilling in the fridge sorry <laughs> so and in another bowl i'm going to put now because we've doubled the recipe because we're pigs so this is a kilo of natural Greek yogurt. I'm going to just put in just under half of this, so about 400 mils, give or take a, a dollop. So, as I said, it um, <clears throat> doesn't need to be exactly measured out. But we'll put the original sort of recipe quantities in the description for you. So. Greek yogurt, like so, and to that I'm going to add some icing sugar, if we can get the lid off. So I'm going to put in four tablespoons of the icing sugar because, as I said, we're doubling the recipe. So, this stuff is mad. It fluffs up everywhere. And some sort of my homemade vanilla extract. So, I'm just going to put a little drop of that in, like so. And then we mix this all together. So we've just given that a, a mix together. Now, I'm going to add in some cream. And we struggle, well, we don't really get double cream here, do we? It's um, just sort of one of those things. We can get fresh uh, cream. We can get fresh cream, but this but stuff it's... keeps in the cupboard, whereas um, fresh cream takes up beer space in the fridge. <laughs> so, oh, this is always a messy bit, because But you get a little... So this is going to be the, the fun bit because I've got to somehow whisk it and add it slowly at the same time. Hang on. So as I haven't enough hands, I'm going to get my lovely assistant. Glamorous. My, yes, my Debbie Not. McGee. What do we do? Here, hold this here. I have a little whisk. Now I'm going to pour this in and whisk. 
and what I need to do just grow two more arms. No, we have a cunning plan. We have a little uh, uh -huh. a little device, don't we? Uh -huh. Thank you, sister. Stabilizer. There you go. <laughs> Look at that. Taking away a hand. So we can oh, pull that in. Now this will will gradually thicken, but it's you know it does take a little bit of time. So right, I hope that's enough now. It's uh, peaking anyway, so we'll uh, do like that. Cause my arms ache. So I'm going to add, now shall I add gooseberries to this or this to the gooseberries, what do you think? Either or. Either or. You don't care, you just want to eat it, don't you? Yeah. I'd add it to the gooseberries, a bigger bowl, and colder. Yes. It's going to help, because it's not as thick as it should be, because it's quite cold. Yeah, huh? quite, 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 quite warm. warm. So, let's see, that's the gooseberries. This is the fool. Right, I'm just going to fold that over. I say it's so hot at the moment. I think that's um, not well, helping. It's a good job you've made an enormous amount. Then we can uh, it'll, it'll cool oh. down in the fridge. I'm going to just pour this into these glasses. So I don't know whether pouring is what you should be doing with them, but I'd say spoon. Okay, so this is my gooseberry fool. No, it's gooseberry, fool. Ah, <laughs> very good. So we're just going to hopefully get this. It's not the easiest. So this amount was meant to do eight, was it? Yes. <laughs> so having prepared the pigs, the boys land, we're now going to attempt, with just two of us, we're going to attempt to get them down there. It's the longest trip any of our pigs have made. So I might stop filming for a minute. I just turned the camera on, they, they literally just walked beside us all the way down. We've had to put up a few barricades like tractors and things, but uh, on the whole, just hey, wow, here's the food. Right, come on, yeah, 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 yeah. Come on. Just need to get some straw to bring the water down. Yeah, I'll st stick with them for a minute. Um, when I finish eating, I'll show them where the water is anyway. Yeah, they've got fresh running water. Yeah. Make sure they have. Uh... Good boy. That's really good. I can't believe that. It's like the easiest. We could have walked them up to Alpadrinian back. Get home. Good, good boys. Got apples and orange, melon, corn. corn. Got it all. Got it all going on. Brilliant. That one. <laughs> I can't believe it. And now that was. Wow, we want more male pigs. Yeah, they are easiest, don't they? 
come over here. It's great watching them explore a new place. We've not had any pigs down here before. Pam, look over here, look, running water. Well, I think he's heard the neighbours. Yeah, up here, look. You can just see her. Alright, mate. There we go. There we go. So this is why we wanted them down here, because there's no actual running water. Don't think he's liking it very much. There's no running water where they were. Now there is, they can do this in summer. <laughs> Look, mate, you're missing out. You're missing out. Exactly what I wanted to see. They've missed this for a few weeks, so so pleased. Oh, they're, they're splattering me in mud, but I'm pleased. Yeah, you like that, mate? You like it? <laughs> so Andrew's been to get new store for him. Uh, obviously, I haven't clad the outside yet, as you can see. But uh, we'll have no rain now until September, so we'll be alright. And, and I've got the water, fresh water down here. And in the period of us going to get straw and water for them, they've made it all the way over. This is where the bees used to be. All the way over the other side. There's lots of rocks and stuff, and they like to dig over the rocks, turn them over, uh, eat the lizards and stuff underneath, believe it or not. Cheers, darling. Cheers. Cheers. And on that note, we'll uh, eat our food. Food. Oh, I say that is rather nice. And say goodbye. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So, if you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching and give it a good old like. And uh, if you liked and aren't subscribed as usual, please, please subscribe. subscribe. It's free. And. <coughs> oh. <laughs> Goosby was quite sharp there. Um, and if you want to get notifications for the next video that we release, please ding, ding, ring that little notification bell and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye. Recipe will be in the description. Mm-hmm. Not the um, one for eight though.
No? Mm. It's just a normal sized portion, surely. Yeah. Mm. Mm. I'll put the rest in the fridge. So, um, just like to say a big thank you to James and Christina from the Kinta uh, YouTube channel. Thanks guys for uh, dropping in the mitre bond. A while ago, I've used it a fairly fair bit, but um, yeah, it's really helpful for that for putting the trim on. So the news is right. I don't know if you can see this very well, but we have Donald, yeah. Daisy, and Demelza. Daisy and Demelza have successfully produced six healthy little ducklings. Um, we had a few other eggs that they've decided not to sit on, but I also currently have two broody chickens. So I've just, we candled the eggs earlier and we're, uh, maybe, maybe not, but I've put a couple under the chickens just to see if they will take them. But uh, yeah, so we have six new little ducklings. I'm so pleased. Good girls.